All right, guys, so this is the second video in the uh, GI series. And so when you approach these questions, it's pretty much all the classical step one questions are. They're going to give you pretty much details, right, or, or some type of symptoms. And you're going to have to formulate your diagnosis. And usually the, the answer choices aren't the diagnosis. There's some, there's some little characteristic of that diagnosis. So make sure it's always like two steps, maybe three steps down the line to where you have to kind of work this. So... Um, make sure that when you when you go through these, you know, you know, we talk about formulating a, a differential, and you're going to work that differential, and that's pretty much how you should approach, um, especially uh, the GI. So, hope you like the video. <clears throat> All right, guys. So, first question reads: A 55-year-old woman comes to the physician because of a six-month history of heartburn, difficulty swallowing solids and liquids. She denies symptoms of nausea and vomiting. She also has a five-five-year history of pain and, and swelling of her wrists and hands. She is a non-smoker and takes no medications. Physical exam reveals no wrinkling of the face and neck. There is synovial thickening of the wrist bilaterally. Which of the following findings is most likely to be seen on esophageal manometry? All right, so <clears throat> whenever you get this difficulty swallowing, you got to put it, you, you just got to have your differential right, right out there. So before getting down into the, what the manometry, which is how they like to test this on step one, you got to know, you know, what is on your differential when you, when you have difficulty with swallowing. And so you got to know this. You know, the first guy is achalasia, okay? Then we have diffuse esophageal spasms. And there's a couple things that are really kind of, you know, you know pathognomonic for each one of these. And if you know those, you should be, you know, halfway halfway there as far as the battle. Then you got a Zenker's diverticulum. You have scleroderma, esophagitis, esophagitis. Um, and then we'll say Barrett's, I don't know if it's one T, Barrett's esophagus, okay? So right out of the gate, if someone comes up to you and says, okay, someone has difficulty swallowing, what is your differential? And then you got to put it out there like this. And this, and this really applies for step one, step two, and step three. They just take it to a different, to a different level on each one. For step one, you got to know the differential, but then you got to know kind of like more of the mechanism, what it looks like on the diagnostic. As you, as you evolve to step two and three, it's more about the treatments and, and such. So you got to know this. For achalasia, okay, very common one, you're going to say absence, it's absence of the peristalsis, and the peristalsis is kind of like the, the wave uh, when, you, when, you, um, you know, when you eat something or when you swallow, I should say, it's kind of like the waveform that allows it to kind of push and go down or, or, or kind of slide it on down. So absence of peristalsis, stalsis, but the key, it's that, but it's high tone, it's a high tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, a high tone, meaning no relax, right? No relax, high tone. Um, so that's achalasia. Now, it's associated with what? Remember, it's associated with that um, organism, the trimp, trimpanosoma, you know, cruzy, you know, kind of South American, kind of bug, the trimp, trimp, Trimpensoma cruzi, and then also associated with that bird's beak appearance, right? These are all things that are really pathognomonic of achalasia, which is probably, this is always going to be on, on my top, you know, first thing because it comes with so many different things. Very common. Um, and what you got to know with this is, uh, you know, they call that the lumen. And then you have all these layers, right? You got the mucosa. You got the... Um, submucosa, you got the muscularis, muscularis, and then you got the uh, serosa. When it comes to the achalasia, okay, you need to know that it's a problem of the muscularis, okay? It's a problem of the muscularis, and more specifically, the myenteric plexus. Now, don't worry. Each of these isn't going to have so much, you know, isn't going to have um, 
you know, as much as this first one, but you got to know achalasia and you got to know it cold. So no, absence of peristalsis, it's a high tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, high tone, no relax, associated with trypanosoma cruzi, associated with bird's beak appearance on radiograph if you do the uh, swallow study, and then it's the muscularis uh, level at the myenteric plexus. You got to know that. This is, this is totally step one level material there, okay? Now, when you think diffuse esophageal spasm, you better be thinking young female, okay? That's kind of like the, uh, you know, the path you monitoring for that imminent, and they have, that's the person who has difficulty swallowing, but it's a young female, and they have chest pain, and it's this, they, as they say, the corkscrew appearance, corkscrew appearance, okay? So what do we know? We got achalasia, absence of peristalsis, high tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, no relax, Bird speak appearance, trim and some cruzy, and then, you know, watch out for the South American person. And then, or they had a trip down there, muscularis level at the myenteric plexus, diffuse esophageal spasm, young female, chest pain, corkscrew appearance. Now, this diver, the Zanker's diverticulum, um, painless, you know, they say it's more uh, proximal esophageal. Um, out pouching. And so what happens is, you know, food gets stuck in there. And so when it's, it, it gets stuck, it stays in, it kind of corrodes and it smells real nasty. This is the one that, you know, they, they, they like to think that this is the one that has bad breath, but in, in all actuality, the bad breath signs gonna, can be with any of these guys that have the, the difficulty with, with swallowing. But a Zanker's diverticulum, it's that out pouching, proximal esophagus, uh, painless. Now, scleroderma, okay. Autoimmune, okay, autoimmune, um, you know, they have activation of the fibroblast, okay, don't get too bogged down in that, but just for now, think autoimmune. Um, now, this one is loss of distal peristalsis, okay, well, you're kind of like, well, man, it looks kind of the same as achalasia, right? Absence of peristalsis, loss of distal peristalsis, okay, that's fine, that's fine, um, but it's, this one is atrophy, of uh, esoph esophageal smooth muscle. But you see the difference? This one's atrophy, whereas what? If we said achalasia, it, remember it was high tone, high tone. Scleroderma is gonna be the atrophy. That's really the big difference between these two, okay? Now, esophagitis, you just gotta, you just gotta think Im immunocompetent person, immuno um, yeah, immunocompetent. Um, and so you're going to be the HIV. They could have the, the herpes, um, candida, CMV. But think in a, an immunosuppressed person. Think immunosuppressed person. They got to give you something in the background with this for you to jump on esophagitis. And then Barrett's esophagus. This is someone who has chronic GERD. And so the cells, the cells are normally... Right, the normal cells in here are going to be the stratified squamous, but when you get the, this erodent and all the, the the acid thrown on that, this stratified squamous changes. Okay, it changes to columnar. Okay, it changes to columnar, you know, columnar epithelial epithelium. Okay, normal stratified squamous, but it changes to columnar. So again, in review, you got the achalasia, absence of peristalsis, high tone, no relax, trypanosoma cruzi, bird's beak, myenteric plexus of the, muscul uh, so the muscularis uh, layer, diffuse esophageal spasm, you better be thinking young female, chest pain, corkscrew, zankers, proximal esophagus, outpouching, bad breath, but that's not path mnemonic of it. Scleroderma, autoimmune, fibroblast, loss of distal peristalsis, which is like, okay, hey, that looks like achalasia. What's the difference? Scleroderma has atrophy of the muscles, whereas achalasia has high tone. Now, they can either test you straight up like that, or they can show you the, um, the waveforms on the manometry. All right, Esophag esophagitis, Im immunocompromised person, Barrett's esophagus, think GERD, and you better be thinking goes from stratified to columnar. Okay, so back to this question, all right? That was a lot, but if you know that, this is the next step. They had difficulty swallowing. Five-year history of pain and swelling of her hands. Uh, she's a non-smoker, 
physical exam, no wrinkling of the uh, no wrinkling of the face and neck, synovial thickening. So what's all this kind of look like? You know, all this is just getting you to jump on the scleroderma, the autoimmune component. So then, what does the peristalsis look like, and what's the lower esophageal tone? Well, we said peristalsis peristalsis in this is going to be decreased, all right? Decrease. Well, well, heck, man, I, it's pretty much narrowed down to one. Not a good choice. Choice is so. The diagnosis, scleroderma, right? Step one, this is classic. They're gonna say, do you know the diagnosis? And then from that, tell me what it can look like. Well, we know it's scleroderma. We know the, the esophageal peristalsis is decreased. What about the lower esophageal tone? Well, remember, that's what makes it different. The lower esophageal tone of scleroderma is, it's atrophy. So it's gonna be de you know, decrease or absent per se, right? If that was achalasia, it would have had an inc increased uh, tone. That's the big difference. So the answer on this one is going to be E, decreased, decreased. This one says, a 45-year-old male complains of retrosternal discomfort and difficulty swallowing. All right, difficulty swallowing. What's my, my differential? Achalasia, we have um, you know, diffuse esophageal uh, spasm. You know, we have the old the, you know, paper there. We got the zankers, trying to go in order. We got scleroderma. We got esophagitis. And we got Barrett's, okay? That should immediately come in the top of your head. And then you can run through those. This person smokes one pack of cigarettes a day, drinks six pack of beer regularly on weekends. BMI is 34. Um, esophageal, I don't know if I have on it. Um, Esophageal manometry is um, performed and demonstrates the increased resting pressure of the lower esophage of the lower esophageal, <clears throat> and increased resting pressure. Okay, what's the di essentially what's the diagnosis on this guy? Now, an increased resting pressure. If you didn't even have this picture, which I didn't have in the first place, I just put it on there as an extra. Is someone? Who, someone? You know, it's a forty-five-year-old male. He, and basically the clue is the manometry demonstrates increased resting pressure. Increase, no let up. It's going to be what? No relax. It's going to be achalasia. Okay? And then if you look at the picture, of course, this is going to be, this would even reinforce your decision, is that here it has that, that bird's beak appearance. Okay? Bird's beak appearance. And again, if you see difficulty swallowing, you better go achalasia, diffuse esophageal spasm, zankers, scleroderma, esophagitis, Barrett's, and know the, kind of the, the pathognomonic features of each one. This is the guy I'd focus in on, but everything's fair game, okay? Because this is you know, autoimmune and that guy too. Okay, 48-year-old female visits your office complaining that she has trouble swallowing solids and foods. Okay, so boom, what do I do? I automatically go to... Uh, achalasia, I go diffuse esophageal spasms, I go zankers, I go scleroderma, I go esophagitis, okay? And then I go Barrett's. I gotta know each one. Persistent bad breath, sometimes wakes up with food on her pillow. Manometry studies show an absence, okay, an absence of functional peristalsis and a failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to collapse upon swallowing. Hmm. So absence of peristalsis is many things. It could be achalasia, could be, you know, could be scleroderma, right? They both have lack of, but then this one says failure of the lower esophageal sphincter to collapse. Failure of it to relax. So, we, oh, it's got to be, it's got to be achalasia, right? So what's the, um, but then I don't see, I, I don't see achalasia over here. So now I got to worry, right? But remember what we said, what is um, that layer to where it affects it. Oops, sorry. It should be the, it, what layer? It should be the muscularis, right? It should be the muscularis, but I don't see that there, but it's the myenteric plexus, myenteric plexus of the muscularis, which is going to be answer choice C. Okay. So again, you, you get the question, they make you tell the diagnosis, and then they're gonna give you, they're gonna make you ask some obscure yet path mnemonic fact about that. You know, if they ask about a scleroderma, um, again, it could be some autoimmune, it could be fibroblast, 
and so on. So you got to have to approach each question in step one like this. Know this, get your diagnosis, and then be prepared to answer something about that diagnosis that's unique. And in this situation, we're talking myenteric uh, plexus. Okay? This one says, 46-year-old Caucasian male presents to the gastroenterologist complaining of heartburn and difficulty swallowing. He has noted history of GERD. Okay, so difficulty swallowing. What do I do? Achalasia, diffuse esophageal spasm, Zanker's diverticulum, scleroderma, esophagitis, and Barrett's. Okay? Noted history of GERD. Okay, which one do we say of GERD? Okay, your GERD was right on that. Okay? The gastroenterologist performs an upper end endoscopy with biopsy. Which of the following would be consistent with this diagnosis? Well, difficulty swallowing, I go here. They give me a clue, GERD, most one associated with this is going to be Barrett's. And of course, when I look at this, they're like, okay, the guy did a biopsy. What would they be seeing in Barrett's? Well, what's past pneumonic of it? Is it paneth cells of the lower esophagus? Is it metaplasia of the upper esophagus? Is it stratified squamous of the uh, lower esophagus? Or is it columnar epithelial cells of the lower esophagus? Well, we know in Barrett's, normally, it's stratified squamous. That's normal, right? But with all that acid being thrown on there, it changes to columnar. So is it A, paneth cells? No, this is um, associated with Crohn's, okay? We'll get, we'll get there at some point. Metaplasia of the upper? No, it's metaplasia of the lower. Is it stratified squamous? No, that's normal. Not after you get, the, you get, you get this thing, you have difficulty swallowing, we know it's Barrett's. Is it D, columnar epithelial cells of the lower esophagus? Yeah, okay? That's what they're looking for. Know that you know what kind of cell it gets changed to. But again, here's a clue. You find the diagnosis and be prepared to answer some kind of question about that diagnosis. So here's just the last little piece is they could throw the, the manometry stuff at you. So I would just kind of make sure you're somewhat familiar with scleroderma versus Achalasia, and remember, it's a lower, lower esophageal sphincter. Uh, the tone in achalasia is high, right? You don't, it doesn't relax. So when you look at the, they, when they play the, the millimeters of mercury, achalasia is, you know, you don't see the peristalsis, but it's a higher tone, doesn't relax. And then scleroderma, again, it's more atrophy. It's at the lower end. So that's really the difference that I like to see um, between those two. So again, if they say difficulty swallowing, make sure that you have that little, um, at least you have those differentials there. And again, make sure you understand this as though you could teach somebody. With difficulty swallowing, you should be able to rattle off, you know, pretty much those, uh, those six diagnoses. So, hope it was helpful.